Jeremy Sohan is quickly becoming one of the most hated players in the entire NBA. All the things you're supposed to do on the basketball court, he does the exact opposite. And I'm not talking about his rainbow of hair colors or goofy demeanor. I'm talking about taunting his opponents into being ejected, picking fights with the league's most fearsome enforcers, attacking future Hall of Famers on social media, ripping his own jersey off in the middle of a game, and shooting free throws in a way all other players are too embarrassed to even try. He has gotten into it with all-stars, and bench players, and opposing fans. Though he openly admits to studying the games of infamous irritators including Draymond Green, Patrick Beverly, and Dennis Rodman, he hates being compared to any of them. Because after all, he has only been in the NBA for a single season, and he's just getting started. But while his crazy antics may be shocking, even more shocking is that they are actually making him a better player and helping his team win. He played a pivotal role in one of the biggest comebacks in basketball history, already improved his foul shooting by more than most players do in their entire career, and despite being drafted as a defensive-minded power forward, is now somehow starting at point guard for one of the most exciting young teams in the NBA. Jeremy doesn't care what you think. He's too busy breaking basketball. And it's starting to rub off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was it was just in the moment. Um. <laughs> Standing out on the basketball court is usually a good thing. For Jeremy Sohan, he had no choice. Born in rural Oklahoma as the eldest son of two basketball players at D2 Panhandle State, he moved all the way to England at the age of two because of his father Ryan's professional career. His mother Annetta was from Poland, and he would travel there during his breaks from school to reunite with family. Wherever he went, Jeremy was the foreign kid. Luckily, his game did all the talking he needed to. While basketball is insanely popular in the UK, the lack of funding and organization means young players have few opportunities to put their skills on display. Despite showing out for his local team in Milton Keynes, things got so dire that Jeremy's mom had to beg the Polish Basketball Federation to give Jeremy a spot on the under-16 team. Luckily, the Sohans were kind of a big deal in Poland. Jeremy's grandfather had been the president of the Warsaw Basketball Association, and his great-grandfather was a national hero, having fought against the Nazis in World War II and survived a concentration camp. Coach David Mazur reluctantly gave Jeremy the last spot on the team, which turns out to be one of the best decisions he ever made, since Jeremy led Poland to the European Class B title in 2019, winning MVP. He then moved to the States to play for high school powerhouse La Lumiere, only to have his season cut short by the pandemic, move back to Europe to play in the German Pro League, dominate there, commit to Baylor, and finally move back to America to play for the Bears. Once he arrived at Baylor, Jeremy was all of a sudden a European player, which according to Baylor assistant Bill Peterson, meant all of the other players thought he was soft. Jeremy made it his number one mission to prove to everyone that he was not. This meant diving for loose balls, setting hard screens, boxing out aggressively, and becoming a menace on the court. His physicality didn't always limit itself to the opponent, as Jeremy one time landed on fellow bear Matthew Meyer an inadvertent elbow so hard that it knocked out a tooth, a tooth which Jeremy later found lodged in his own arm. He promptly removed it, bandaged up, and returned to the game. Having adjusted to playing in so many different countries, Jeremy no longer had any shyness about being himself when acclimating to a new team. Moreover, he knew exactly what it took to bring his teammates together. During a flight delay at the airport before a game against Kansas State, one of Jeremy's teammates jokingly bet him $200 to shave off his signature colorful hair, to which Jeremy not only agreed, but started doing then and there in the airplane with a pair of battery-powered clippers before the plane had to take off and he was left with a half-shaven head. The episode not only became legendary among the Baylor players, it proved just how well Jeremy understood that being a clown could get his teammates going. The time his teammates really needed to get going most was in that year's NCAA tournament, when the number one seed Bears found themselves down 25 points against number 8 UNC with 10 minutes to go. While even the announcers had started counting Baylor out, Jeremy had not. 
he single-handedly put on one of the most infuriating performances of all time. Getting up in the Carolina players' faces, diving for loose balls, playing entirely too hard for a player whose team was facing such an insurmountable margin. After drawing a straight elbow from Brady Manick, one of the Tar Heels' top scorers, he performed an epic flop drawing a flagrant two foul and having the UNC star ejected from the game. He then got up close and personal with Carolina big Armando Baycott, so much so that the usually solid Baycott forgot how to shoot free throws, allowing Baylor back into the game. Jeremy then capped it all off by banking, yes banking, a massive three-pointer to help force overtime. Unfortunately, the Bears eventually lost the game, meaning the remarkable performance was largely forgotten. However, just getting to overtime was an accomplishment. If Baylor had pulled it out in the extra session, it would have been the single largest comeback win in March Madness history. Back in Europe, I was number nine. And then uh, when I got to Baylor, I was number one. So nine plus one is 10. <laughs> A group who clearly didn't forget Jeremy's showing against UNC was NBA scouts. Despite meager statistics, the Polish freshman was selected 9th overall by the San Antonio Spurs in the 2022 NBA Draft. Making it to the NBA was largely thanks to his family, particularly his mom, who always gave him the advice to be cheeky, on and off the court. Advice Jeremy took to heart. During the 2022 Summer League, the Spurs rookie, who had still not played a single official game in the NBA, directed his cheekiness to NBA superstar Russell Westbrook. While playing a word association game with teammate Malachi Branham for the Spurs social media, Jeremy responded to the prompt, Russell Westbrook gets a lot of them, by saying, bricks. The answer was triple doubles, but Jeremy's savage take exploded online, prompting an eventual apology to the multi-time all-star with Jeremy saying it was just banter. Jeremy's attitude also showed up on the court, when in an early November game against the Memphis Grizzlies, he reportedly tried to disrupt Memphis center Steven Adams' concentration on the last play of overtime by resorting to, yes, pinching his opponent's nipple, a tactic which seemingly did not work, as the Spurs lost the game, and which later prompted Adams to call the rookie a dirty redacted. Then, in a January matchup against the Brooklyn Nets, he went up against noted NBA tough guy Markeith Morris, whose reputation for not taking any BS didn't stop Jeremy from jawing. After burying a three-pointer in the second quarter, Jeremy threw up three fingers in celebration and began trash-talking right at the 11-year NBA veteran, who proceeded to hit Jeremy with a hard illegal screen, which Jeremy responded to with a giant bear hug, bringing both players to the ground and sparking a near fistfight, all of this ending up with the two players having to be separated by teammates. Jeremy later said bizarrely that stepping onto the basketball court, he was ready to go to war, putting the league on notice that he wasn't afraid to get into it, no matter who you were. Really, no matter who. Just a few weeks later in a game against Utah, Jeremy scored an and one and then took exception to a slight grab after the whistle from Utah Reserve Chris Dunn, proceeding to swing at the unsuspecting Dunn, starting what was likely the first fight of Dunn's entire NBA career. But Jeremy's willingness to fight extended beyond rival players. In a March game against the Rockets, he inexplicably ripped his own jersey at the chest in frustration, causing the game to be delayed so that he could get a new one. While this was likely nothing personal and maybe just a case of Jeremy forgetting his own strength, it cemented his status as a complete wildcard on the court. What cemented it even more was his decision to switch to shooting one-handed free throws, something few NBA players in history have been bold enough to even try, despite solid evidence that it actually improves free throw shooting. In fact, NBA legend Wilt Chamberlain, a notoriously poor free throw shooter, started shooting one-handed during the 1961-1962 season, only to see his foul shooting climb a full 11 percentage points. Wilt quickly abandoned the approach, because he felt it made him look silly. NBA players as a whole are incredibly reluctant to do anything different, especially on the free throw line, when the arena's entire attention is on them. Hall of Famer Rick Barry spent his entire career getting made fun of for shooting underhanded, even though he made a ridiculous 90% from the line. Shaquille O'Neal, one of the worst foul shooters of all time, said in his autobiography that there was a 0% chance he would ever shoot underhanded because he was too cool for that. If anyone was willing to try something unusual, it was Jeremy. 
After a suggestion from Spurs assistant Brett Brown, he started shooting one-handed in practice and began making his foul shots consistently. One day, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich told Jeremy he was shooting that way from now on, and not just in practice. After changing his form, Jeremy went from 45% to 69% by the end of the season, meaning he went from a terrible foul shooter to a pretty good one, just by being unafraid of making a fool of himself. I don't really care, so if it works, it works. And I mean, I was like, let's do it. Most NBA players that are afraid of making a fool of themselves respect the hierarchy of the league's best players. Rookies keep their mouths shut, and you better not criticize someone who is better than you. All-Stars, well, they're pretty much untouchable. Jeremy skipped just the All-Stars and went right for the league's most legendary player, tweeting from home while watching LeBron James sell some contact in the Lakers' playoff series against the Nuggets, why does King James flop so much? Aside from questioning whether LeBron was truly the king, he called out the chosen one for flopping, something that even professional TV talking heads paid to generate controversy are scared to do. Even the boldest NBA loudmouths keep their trash talk limited to one or two opposing players. Jeremy extended it to an entire fan base. During the 2023 NBA Draft Lottery, the Houston Rockets had the highest odds to land the first pick, and with it French phenom Victor Wembanyama, one of the most hyped prospects of all time. However, when Houston lost out, earning only the number 4 pick, Jeremy mocked the team's fans on Twitter, posting a video collage of sad Rockets fans reacting to losing the lottery. Then when the angry Rockets fans responded by starting an entire Twitter spaces with the whole purpose of roasting Jeremy, he decided to join in and take part in the roast of himself, though he was the one to get the last laugh. Since the Spurs won the top pick, drafted Wembenyama, and not only that, Jeremy convinced the future superstar to dye his hair to look like a snow cone, the ultimate troll to Houston. Something which many probably thought was a troll was the idea of Jeremy playing point guard. He did so a few times his rookie year in the absence of Trey Jones, though with mixed results. However, Coach Pop shocked the world by announcing Jeremy as the full-time starter at point guard prior to the 23-24 season. And while he isn't exactly Steph Curry, that doesn't mean the experiment is doomed to fail. As Jeremy has shown his whole career, appearances can be deceiving. Sometimes you have to try something ridiculous to give your team the edge. Throughout his globetrotting basketball journey, the Spurs star has realized that defying expectations can be the key to unlocking a level of play beyond what many think possible. There's a method to the madness. And basketball better watch out.